Recording in progress. Hi, this is Steve. This is a discussion about trans rights versus women's rights. It's an interesting discussion, but in truth covered a lot of ground already covered elsewhere and is unlikely to change already made up minds. It's a discussion between Coleman Hughes and Kathleen Stock. The link to the full interview is in the description. So I picked out two specific things that were said, which I don't think have been discussed as much before, one by Kathleen and one by Coleman. The Coleman issue will be in a separate video, part two, if you like. In this commentary, I want to cover the political aspect which Kathleen mentioned in a seemingly unimportant by the by remark. But I don't think it is by the by. It seems to point to the continuing hardwired tribalism so many folk get sucked into. I want to make it clear that I am seeking clarification of Kathleen's thinking. I'm not criticising her, or at least I won't until I have a better understanding of her position on this. Indeed, I agree with her on the trans issue, but my questions still need answering to help my understanding of the many, I suspect, people, especially on the left of politics, who think as Kathleen does. So Kathleen Stock was saying, that she believes trans rights, certainly the radical version, is antithetical to women's rights. And in particular, being a lesbian herself, she's worried about the effect it has on lesbians, but to be fair, across the board, i.e. children and gay men as well. However, she also said that she would never be able to bring herself to vote for the UK Conservative Party in an election. She has always and will continue to vote for left-wing parties. On the face of it, there seems to be some cognitive dissonance in this view, which is perhaps surprising, bearing in mind that she is a professional philosopher and academic. Perhaps the issue is that only people to the right of centre or those able to stand back a pace can see this, and people who have always been on the left in politics simply have a blind spot here, but the Conservative Party from 2010 to the present day, whether it be Cameron, May or Sunak, are as far to the left as it's possible for a Conservative Party to be and still get away with using the name Conservative. I hope. The reality is that from 2010, in many ways, perhaps all ways, but there will always be someone that will argue against this, but certainly in many ways, since 2010, the Conservative Party has been and continues to be a Blairite party. Economically, socially, on immigration and the environment, there's barely a sheet of toilet paper between them. Kathleen believes that the radical trans rights claims and demands are the most important socio-political issue of our time. She must do because she was prepared to put up with a huge amount of abuse and pressure in her job at the University of Sussex, and finally to give up that job. That's how important it is to her. Nevertheless, all the left-wing parties in the UK, whether Labour in Wales or Labour in England or the Green Party or the Liberal Democratic Party, all of them would be implementing the radical trans activist demands as the SNP is trying to do in Scotland. So in Kathleen, we have a highly intelligent academic who appears to believe, and I think she would have a very good case to argue, that the radical trans rights demands must be resisted at almost any cost, that it is incredibly important, so important, remember, that she was prepared to give up her job prepared to be hounded out of her cushy academic enclave. And yet she continues to say, I will vote for left-wing parties, the very parties who would bring in precisely what she does not want. I've never understood people who can persuade themselves that this cognitive dissonance is acceptable. I understand, of course, that there are issues about which you might disagree with the party you normally vote for but they are relatively small issues or peripheral issues, and that you certainly don't believe they are important enough to actually change who you vote for, unless another party literally believes more of what you do than your current party. 
But that isn't the case in this situation. Kathleen clearly believes that the trans rights versus women's rights issue is so important, she was prepared to be hounded out of her job for it. And yet she still says that the only party where there is any chance of not going along with the trans rights activist demands, although I wouldn't bet on it, is at the same time the only party that she will not vote for. I would love to know her explanation of how she can think like that, because from my perspective, one of two things must be true for her to think like that. One, actually, this issue that she was prepared to put up with abuse and lose her job for is actually not so important that it supersedes all other considerations, in which case, why did she not just capitulate and apologise? Why did she allow herself to be hounded out of her job? That doesn't make sense to me. Or two, she is so closed-mindedly invested in her general left-wing political ideology that even where it is obvious that she needs to change her voting allegiance, she simply cannot physically make herself do it. In which case, I assume that at any coming election, she will not vote. She will abstain. Because she can't make herself vote for the only party that will actually give her what she wants, which is not to cave in to the most radical trans rights activist demands. But equally, she can't, surely, continue to vote for any of the left wing parties who would bring in exactly those radical trans rights activist demands that she says are so vitally important to resist that she was prepared to lose her job over it. There's an obvious contradiction in thinking here, and I would just love to know how she explains that. Kathleen Stock in no way owes me an explanation. Who am I, Mr. No One of Any Importance? But I won't be the only one who heard that interview and thought, hmm, hang on a minute, Kathleen. And so if via the power of social media she gets to see this, she might care to reply. Up to her, of course. The next video will cover a remark made by Coleman, which I also want to push back a little on. Thanks for listening.